So hello, welcome to this bots and hip padding masterclass organized by University of Pattern Drafting. So this is our first class. Welcome, welcome, welcome to class. This is our first class and our first lecture is going to be on how to take accurate measurements for your bots and hip padding. So it's important to actually watch this video to the end because I'm going to be teaching you about figure enhancement techniques. So let me just give you a sneak peek. So figure enhancement techniques are techniques that are actually used to accentuate the shape of the female body. So essentially, they are techniques that are actually used to create that illusion of an hourglass shape. Very, very important because you need to know which technique to apply per for which body type do you understand that so there are four types of figure enhancement technique and i'm going to be telling you about that at the end of this video so you need to watch out for that also please bear in mind that our waist snatching masterclass is coming up from the 20th of november so this class is going to be really detailed a lot of people who have watched my video on waist snatching have said that it's not detailed enough and they didn't really get to understand um, what I was talking about in that video. So this class is going to be a lot more detailed. The calculation is going to be explained in more detail. The construction process, because there's a construction process to achieve a very snatched waistline, especially for plus size women, such that they won't need to wear waist trainers when they are wearing your garments. So to be a part of this masterclass, please follow the seller link in the description box. Let's go right back to our tutorial on butt and hip padding. So there's a difference between um hip padding hip padding alone and then hip and butt padding do you understand so i'm going to be explaining that to you in the process of taking this measurement so here is my dress form my pretty 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 dress form and you can already see that this dress form has on a butt and hip pad do you understand so this is a butt and hip pad so let me turn the back to show you what it actually looks like so can you see the hip and butt part? Can you see the way it is? Like, look at the shape at the back. Can you see that? So here is the back. Can you see that? It's actually padded both at the sides. That's the hip area. Can you see that? As well as the back. So this is what the back looks like. And then see the sides. Can you see? So the fullness is all the way around. Can you see that? The fullness is all the way around. So I'm going to pin on a hip pad hip pad alone do you understand that i'm just trying to show you the difference the hip pad alone so that you will see what that actually looks like so can you see i've added like an extra hip pad on it can you see, see the hip pad so can you see what a hip pad actually looks like so can you see the hip pad in? can you see what it actually looks like Look at what it looks like. Can you see? It, you see it doesn't extend to the center back as against this butter hip pad that extends to the center back. So that's pretty much the difference. It just gives width by the side. Do you understand? Like it increases the side. So it gives hip. You know, there are people who have, they have bum, but they don't have hip. Do you understand? So this hip padding is for them. But there are people who just don't have like bum and hip at all. So you use, so you make the hip and butt padding for them. So you can see the difference. And then look at the side. Can you see how the side looks? And then see it in front. See where it gets to in front. Can you see that? Can you see that? So ours is going to be a somewhat different shape from this. Slightly, you know, fuller. Do you understand? Because ours is really for couture. It's not, these ones are worn. Like you can wear this under um um custom made dresses you know however the ones that are going to attach to the um, garment if it's just a hip alone part hip pad alone then i would make ours you know slightly just you know just slightly bigger than this do you understand so i'm going to go ahead and create it i just wanted to show you the difference and then also look at the butt and hip padding like can you see first of it extends do you understand? It extends, it comes down. So that when you pad the bottom hip, it's not like you pad the bottom hip and then the ties are still looking flat. Do you understand? Because there are people who are slim, slim. So if you are giving them that hip and butt um, padding, if you just do that alone and it doesn't extend somewhat to the ties, then their legs will come out looking thin. You know, the figure will not be balanced. Do you understand? So that's why for the hip and butt padding, you need to extend it as long as this gems and whereas if it's just hip padding alone then you know just a bit you know would be fine so this is what we're going to be doing i'm going to be showing you how to take the measurements for both of them 
so here is my dress form now this is my naked dress form so now we're going to go ahead and take the measurement so the first measurement that we need to take are the second first measurement so the second first measurement that we're going to be working with are the waist circumference can you see the way that i'm taking the measurement remember that in taking measurements there should be one finger in between the tape rule and the body do you understand so you can see the way i'm taking it so the waist circumference is 27 inches this is for my dress form i'm going to be making the thing for myself so the measurements might be different for me so this is the hip circumference can you see the way i took the measurements one finger in between the body and the tape rule and you can see how firm i'm taking it so this is 37 inches do you understand so that's the waist and the hip circumference so now let's go on to our vertical measurements so your vertical measurements are your measurements that are taken vertically on the body so the first vert first vertical measurement that we're going to be dealing with is the waist to the hip line so for most women the waist to the hip line is usually between 6.5 and 7.5 inches and on an average it's usually seven inches so for most women from their navel to their hip line is seven inches do you understand that works for most women in most cases including plus size women do you understand that so if you take that um that that um figure waist to your hip line first off note that seven inches so write that out so the next vertical measurement we're going to be taking is your waist to your underbutt so usually from the hip line to the underbutt is usually between four and five inches for most women do you understand so i measured my mine is actually four inches so that is um from the navel where i'm taking the measurements where the skirt will sit to the underbutt so in taking that measurement first off you can see that this is um something like signifies the waistline so tie a band around your navel do you understand so that you can place the tape roll from there and then measure all of the other coordinates do you understand that so in taking that measurement i've turned my my dress form so can you see take that um um on that box measurement from the side so that when you are standing in front of a mirror you'll be able to see clearly so can you see from the waist to the underbutt for this um, dress form is about 10 10 inches do you understand for most women it's be about 11 between 11 and 12 inches or 11 and 11.5 inches do you understand so you take that measure you can see what i'm calling the underbutt can you see the space where that curve stops where the curve starts to go in do you understand like the most depressed point after your bum do you understand so where that um where the the lap where the tie sort of like um starts from do you understand so you take that measurement so that's your waist to your under but that's the next measurement that we need so now let's take the measurements for our hip pad first so if I do, that's the hip pad alone hip padding alone so for your hip padding alone remember that i said that the difference between hip pad hip padding alone and then hip and butt padding is that that hip and butt padding gets to the center back but the hip padding doesn't get to the um, center back because it's just to sort of like increase the width do you understand so let me move this dress form and then this is regarded as the side seam can you see this is regarded as the side seam so somehow if you are wearing well, most of the clothes that you have would definitely have a side seam so you can use that as a guide so from the side seam along that hip line you know, remember you're marking this along the hip line you are trying to get the um, the width of the hip pad so the width in front is different from the width at the back so for the width at the back when you measure it you are measuring sort of like close to usually i like to use standard measurements because standard measurements is just usually much much easier so for the back hip padding you can use between seven and eight inches if you're a somewhat small size a petite size you can use eight seven inches but if it's a plus size that has you know that's already kind of big do you understand you can use like eight inches for that hip padding but all in all one of the major things to note is that hip that's hip alone padding will stop about two inches from the center back do you understand between two and three inches from the center back do you understand so from that center back just mark three inches that is where the back um hip padding would stop do you understand as for the front for the front hip padding you can use five between four and five inches 
gemstone because it's just the hip you're trying to part this is just all you're trying to part gemstone you're not going beyond that point so for the back for the back you use between use about two inches from the center back while for the front you use between four and five inches depending on whether it's a plus size person you're making this so, gemstone so you can see that it just covers this hip area can you see that it just covers the hip area sorry between seven and eight inches excuse me so between seven and eight inches that's the length of our hip alone padding so bear in mind that i said the front five inches back two inches from the center back whatever that will give you then for the length start from 1.5 inches from the navel and then measure between seven and eight inches depending on whether it's a plus size or a petite size person that you are making the um, padding for so now let's go on to take the measurement for the hip and butt padding so for the hip and butt padding remember that i said that that one in that case you're trying to you know make this whole area full and it's going to you know somewhat extend to the thighs so that it doesn't look funny so it's not like the person's leg is just lenge lenge and then the body is just then the hip area and the bum area is really full gents and it's to be obvious that the outfit is padded because the shape is not balanced when you're doing hip and butt padding you can just start it from the band of the skirt gents from the band on this of the skirt so depending on where the client puts her skirt however if the client puts her skirt on the navel then you should bring it down a bit maybe about by about an inch or maybe the same one inch and a half that you use for the um, hip padding gents but in most in most cases where the client puts the skirt on the um this bone this waist bone do you understand remember that if the skirt starts at the waist bone, it means that the band, which will be maybe like about two inches or something, will come up, you know, and be maybe below the navel, maybe just maybe an, half an inch below the navel. Do you understand? So in most cases, that skirt, the body of the skirt is starting at this your waist bone that you can feel. Do you understand? This is your waist bone that you can feel. So that's where we are going to start that padding for. So in that case, in, in, in that case, most of the time, the, the length of your hip and um, butt padding should be 12 inches. Do you understand? So the length of that hip and butt padding should be 12 inches. Now, remember that I said for the back, remember that back, the way I'm measuring this is for measuring this from the side seam. So measure from the side seam to your center back. That's the width, the um, length of the back um, padding. For the front padding, we would use between 6 and 6.5 inches. In most cases, 6 inches, you know, might be 6 inches would be okay. So for that hip and butt padding, this is how it is going to go. So let's imagine that this is that bone, that waist bone. So it will now come like this. Can you see that? Can you see the shape is going to follow? Do you understand? And it's going to extend somehow, somehow, a bit to the ties. So now the next measurement that we're going to be taking is the skirt length. Now the skirt length can be anything. So for a short skirt, it can be maybe 19 inches, 20 inches, 18 inches, depending on how long or short you want that skirt to be. So those are the basic measurements that we need for this um, um, butt and hip padding. So the next thing that we're going to be doing now is to draft the pattern for our skirt. In most cases, when you're padding, it's going to be somewhat pencil skirt. So even if it's, it's a mermaid skirt, you know, it'll still be penciled at the knee. So we're going to be drafting the pattern for a pencil skirt to which we would attach this butt and hip padding. So on to our brief class on figure enhancement. I mentioned what figure enhancement means. So the four types of figure enhancement techniques are bust padding, waist snatching, hip padding, and hip and butt padding. So you might need one or a combination of two or more of this technique to accentuate um, different female body types. So here are the different female body types. So for the triangle shaped woman, you can see that the fullness is at her hip. So all you might need to do is just to pad the bust. 
you can see that the waistline is already defined somewhat so you might not really need to touch that so for the inverted triangle you can see that her shoulders are broad in most cases their shoulders are broad their bust is just um is not big you know just you know moderate size and then they are narrow at their lower torso so what you need to do is you might need to snatch that waistline a bit and then pad the hip do the hip and butt padding for them so you can see the rectangular shape this lady is literally just you know a really slim figure so what you might need to do in this case to accentuate her figure is pad the bust snatch that waistline a bit more in most cases their um, waistline is already slightly defined and then you would need to pad do the hip and butt padding for this sort of lady so you can see the hour hourglass shape you know really nice shape you might not really need to touch much on you might not even need to do anything for this shape you know and then the next is the diamond shaped lady you can see that her top part her upper torso is narrow the lower torso is narrow and then the waistline is really wide so what you need to do to balance out that figure is to part the bust snatch that waistline and then do hip padding do you understand you might not need the hip and butt padding and then you can see the rounded shape this rounded shape is also called apple shape so you can see that she's just full upwards the upper torso is just really wide so the bust might be full and then the tummy would be big and then the hip would be really narrow so all you just need to do for this lady might just be to snatch that waistline and then pad um the hip do you understand that and then you can see the pear shape so you can see the pear shape she's really full at the lower torso meaning that her hip is really full and then the bust might be you know really small for her body size do you understand so all you need to do is just part the bust area and then accentuate that shape by snatching the waistline so you really need to know what technique to employ for what body type so in looking at your clients or looking at yourself you need to be able to decipher what you need to do to achieve you know a more enhanced figure now this is not to say that all the other body types aside from the hourglass um shape are not perfect they are actually perfect but just like in some cases you know the clients might just want to enhance their body shape for you know certain reasons maybe a birthday shoot or you know maybe to fit into a garment or for a wedding or whatsoever that is so this is basically all we'll deal with this in detail in the butt and hip padding masterclass so bear in mind that this whole um, tutorial was a snippet from a hip and butt padding masterclass so to be a part of this class please follow the seller link in the description box or send a whatsapp message to this number that you can see on the flyer also to be part of the waist snatching masterclass there's a seller link for the waist snatching masterclass please follow that link to be part of this class seeing as a lot of people have you know talked about my youtube video saying that they didn't really my youtube video on waist snatching actually saying that they didn't really understand a lot of the things that i was talking about there so the calculation for waist snatching um, is going to be a lot more detailed in this class and very explanatory the construction process also is going to be very detailed and explanatory also i'm going to be teaching you how to you know lace up your corset in the case of corsets i'm going to show you how to lace up your corset to actually achieve a snatched waistline because there's actually a technique to lacing up your corset the right way so all of this are much more we are going to be dealing with in all of these classes so I trust that you found this video very, very helpful. Please ensure that you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you aren't subscribed yet. So stay blessed and keep winning. Ciao.